Hi guys, and welcome to this, my video on geometric sequence applications. Uh, he says, tripping over there. My name's Darren from Mass Group. Really good to see you. Can you do me a favor before I go further? Can you subscribe to my YouTube channel? By all means, turn off notifications. Why do you need to be spammed by me? I'll never spam you. It just lets me know that people are watching. Yes, imagine my life. It's lonely in this room. I never get out. Yes, I should be wasting away. Whole new discussion. But if you just subscribe, uh, it just lets me know that someone out there is actually watching and it's worthwhile doing this. Um, on TikTok, I think I'm saying that right. I'm on TikTok. Uh, very useful uh, if you can sign up over there or mathsguru.com where all the things you see behind me you will actually be able to download. Right, what are we going to work with today? Well, we are looking at how to find the nth term of a geometric sequence. Yes? Okay. Uh, how to find the formula for the nth term, understand how to find the common ratio when given a percentage change, and be able to apply the knowledge to real world situations. My goodness, don't you feel better for knowing that? Now, in our past learning, particularly in the last video, we talked about what a geometric sequence was, and that's one that multiplies to get from term to term to term. And we looked at the idea of how we can find common ratios, which are only ever multiplies, never divides, and how we can use our CAS to graph them and sort of create sequences and what have you. Happy with that? Okay. Now, in an even earlier lesson, we looked at arithmetic sequences, and we knew that actually, although it's nice to have a term to term rule, it would be even better if we could go to the 50th term or the 100th term without having to add on, you know, three 100 times. And that's where we got the formula T of M is equal to A plus N minus one times D. All right, so that was useful to me because it allowed me to find out my 20th term as long as I knew my first term and I knew my common difference. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do the same for geometric sequences? Well, if we couldn't, this video would be very short, but as it turns out, we actually can. Now again, I'm gonna explain the theory, but the next screen is actually the answer. And I know a lot of you lads out there, sorry, it's always the lads will be like, oh, I don't wanna to listen to this. God, you're boring, you're doing me editing. I'll just go to the flipping formula. Well, okay, awesome, go to the formula, make sure you understand how it works. For the rest of you who are still watching this, we know that T1 is two. Hold on a moment. In a previous video, we said that T1 and A were the same thing. So I now know that A is two. I know my first term is two. And again, first term is fairly subjective. What am I gonna try and find now? I wanna say, well, how do I get from two? So how do I get to T2? Well, I did two times, in this situation, my common ratio of three. And again, if you don't know how to find the common ratio, six divided by two gave me three. 18 divided by six gave me three, and so it goes on. So in that situation, my R is equal to three. Ha 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 ha, and that gave me six. Well, T3 was two times three times three. Why? Because I'm always trying to find a way of going from my first term to my you know term and here. So that was two times three. That there is two times three times three. And to get to T4, I go two times three times three times three. Well, like we did previously, there must be a quicker way of being able to write this. Well, that there can be written as two times, well, when we got a number multiplied by itself, I can use powers or index notation. That's the same as two times three squared, because I've got three times three, three squared. That there would be two times three cubed. So t to the power of five would be two times three to the power of four, and t to the power of six would be two times three to the power of five. And do you notice something here? Yes, well, like we did previously, there is a link between this lowercase number here, or this subscript number here of a six, and the floating number there. There we go, that's a six, the floating number was a five. The subscript was a five, the floating number was a four. But where did this two come from? Oh, it was my first term. Where did this three come from? My common ratio. And lo and behold, we can then say that T of M, in the same way as did before, is my first term, which is A, times my common ratio, which we said was R, and that becomes to the power of N minus one. Again, whatever this little number is here, we take one and we raise our common ratio to that power. There we go. For those of you who were desperately waiting or already went ahead, t to the n is equal to a times r to the n minus one. And again, a is my first term, r is my common ratio, and n is the term we're trying to find. Happy with that? Simple so far? Let's use it. Find t15, so we're gonna find t15. Now again, 
The minute I've written that down, I now know that my value of n is going to be 15. ka -ching. In the geometric sequence, which is 3, 6, 12, 24. So I now know my a is 3. And I'm going to write over here, remember, t of m is equal to a times r to the power of m minus 1. Now, why do I write this down? Muscle memory. The more you write it down, the more your brain can remember it. It literally cannot not remember it. And that sounds really stupid, but it's true. You do sports, you do, I don't know, music. You do something, you're teaching your brain, your muscles to keep repeating stuff for success. It's exactly the same here. And you're going to, you've phased out, haven't you? I can feel it. All right, so what do we need to know? We need to know our value of R, our common ratio. So we're going to take the second term, which is 6, divide it by the first term, which is 3. That gives me 2. And I'm just going to check, is 12 divided by 6 also 2? Yes, so it's not a trick question. My common ratio is 2. There we go. So how do I now find T of 15? I do A, which is 3, times R, which is 2, to the power of N minus 1, which is 14. Now, I don't know about you, I've got no idea how to do that in my head, so let's go back to my calculator. That uh, there was from a previous lesson. So what do we do? We're going to do 3 times 2 to the power of 14. Hit enter, and we get a fairly sizable number there, which is going to be 49,152. Whew! That wasn't difficult, we got a formula. All right, have we got another example? Mm, nope, we're moving on to the next section. There are examples coming later on. Now, way, way back in the course, if you are watching this uh, in logical order, we would have been able to turn percentages, or percentage increases and decreases into multipliers. And realistically speaking, we're just gonna do the same thing again here. So for example, if you remember when a cost was gonna rise by 10%, well, I used to teach it, or still do teach it, that, well, we started with 100%. We've added on 10%, which gives me 110% of what we started with. Happy with that so far? Awesome. Now, to go from a percentage to a decimal, we divide by 100. So that gives me a multiplier of 1.1. So we now know a 10% increase actually is a multiplier of 1.1. And let's just check, if I had 50 bucks and I wanted to increase it by 10%, if I multiply that by 1.1, let's just check on my calculator, and unfortunately I've left that on the screen, I'll take it off in a moment and re-explain it. So 50 times 1.1, hit enter, and there we go. So in that situation, we would have 55. Let's turn my calculator off. Already turned off. And what do we notice? Well, has that gone up 10%? Well, yes, 10% of 50 was five. We've added it on and we got 55. And again, just saying here, if I've got 100% plus 10%, that gave me 110%, which when I divide it by 100 to turn a percentage into a decimal multiplier, I got my 1.1. So if I want to keep increasing something by 10%, I can just keep multiplying by 1.1. What about... A different one. Now, I know I've got the screen here. It says 10% increase. Let's do a 20% decrease. How's that going to work? Well, again, we've started with 100%. I'm decreasing, so I'm going to take away 20%, which means I've got 80% of what I started with. That's a percentage. How do I go to a decimal multiplier? I divide by 100. Remember, these notes are all on MathGuru.com. You can actually download them, sign up there for free. Um, 80 divided by 100 it would give me 0 0.8. So again, if I want to reduce something by 20%, let's say $60. If I multiply that by 0 0.8, bring up my calculator, let's type in here, 60, oops, 60 times 0 0.8 gives me $48. Now all that means is that 80% of the 60 is $48, or I've reduced it by $12. This makes life so, so much easier. And again, I've done a 20% decrease. I'm a screen ahead of myself. What am I doing here? Let's do another one. Let's do two on this one. Uh, let's do an increase of 15%. Again, we've got 100 plus the 15 is 115 percent. Divide that by 100 gives me a multiplier of 1. 0.15. There we go. Now these multipliers, believe it or not, are just common ratios. Yeah, because if I'm multiplying to go from term to term to term by the same number, it's also a common multiplier. Barry, you're confusing the life out of me again. What about a decrease of, I know, 13%? Well, we're going to do 100 minus 13, 
which is going to give me 87%. Divide that by 100 is going to give me a multiplier of 0.87. So when I multiply by 0.87, the numbers are going to get less and less and less. They're going to, oh, they're going to decrease by 87% each time. Now, I know a lot of you out there like rules, and this is another way of doing it, yes? So I've just said that basically a multiplier is another word for the common ratio. So if we look here, if I've got a percentage increase of 10%, then basically we can say that my common ratio, I'm just using this formula here, is given by 1 plus P, which is 10, on 100. And believe it or not, that will also give you 1.1. So it's totally up to you how you do it. Believe it or not, the formula that I've just shown you is exactly what I was just doing a moment ago. Yeah, I just did it in a slightly different order. If you are going to want to do a decrease, and say we did a decrease of 30%, then I would do R is equal to 1 minus 30 on 100, which would actually give you 0 0.7. Right, so knowing how to go from percentage change into common ratios is going to make life a little bit easier. And of course, there's an example here. Right, a state, correct to two decimal places. And the number of people in general maths who sadly can't round to two decimal places is quite scary. Uh, the first four terms in each of the geometric sequences for the changes given. So the first one, I'm gonna start at 200, and I'm gonna be 4% less than. Okay, so I'm going down by 4%. So I've got 100, I'm minusing four, gives me 96%. Divide that by 100, gives me a multiplier of 0 0.96. And I'm gonna show you again how to use your calculator in a slightly different way, or probably an easier way. And most of you will be like, why didn't you show me that before? I did in a previous video. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna clear this screen down, open up a new calculator. A lot of you go use the scratch pad. No, never will. Never, 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 never. All right, I'd much prefer this one here. So how do I do this? Well, if you remember, if you put your first time in as 200 and hit enter, it puts that into my memory. Now, to get each of the next terms, I'm gonna do answer, my previous answer, multiplied by 0 0.96. Hit enter, and out comes the number 192. Hit enter again, out comes the number 184 points. Now, it said correct to two decimal places. That's got two decimal places, three, two. Hit enter again, I get 176.95. Now, if you don't know how to round to decimal places, please, please, please learn. It's hugely important because people lose exam marks left, right, and center with this. But there we go. Starts at 200. Each new term is 4% less than the previous term. And write the first four terms. ka -ching. Starts at 500, all right? So we've got 500 in this time and is 12% more than it's going up. So I've got 12, started with 100. I'm adding on 12, it gives me 112%. I want to divide that by 100 to give me a multiplier of 1.12. So what am I gonna do now? Right, well, I'm gonna go menu, actions, let's clear my history, and let's start again. Oh, there's another way of doing it. So again, first term, 500, hit enter. Answer times 1.12, hit enter 560. Hit enter again. Uh, 627.2 and the last one 702.46 to two decimal places and you know believe it or not life just it becomes easy with these type of things if you understand what your first time is and how to get to your multiplier right last question an application style question because obviously in an exam what are we going to try and do give you an application style question as a park ranger megan has been working on a project or is it project? No, it's project. To increase the number of rare native orchids in Wilson's Promontory National Park. I'm already bored. Flowers, no interest. At the start of the project, a survey found 200 of the orchids. Hmm, I wonder what that number could be. It is assumed from similar projects that the number of orchids will increase by 18% each year. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do 100 plus 18, and I know that it's not asking me to do that, but trust me, I'm gonna do it, 118%, which becomes a 1.18 multiplier. Just, I know I'm gonna use it, and I know my first term is gonna be 200. Let's see what happens, write this down. This is just my working out space. Uh, a, state the first term and the common ratio. See, I didn't even read the question, I knew what they were doing. So, for part A, 
What is my first term? So A would be equal to 200, and my common ratio would be 1.18. Not percent, just 1.18. Uh, part B, find a rule for the number of orchids at the start of the nth year. Well, again, when we go back to the rule, let's go back. Can I do that here? Let's go back. This there is a rule. Yes, so we'll use this here as my rule. And again, in another video, I'm going to talk about a recurrence relationship. And again, it's very important you understand the difference between those two. But we want to have that rule. So let's use that then. So we know the general rule is T of n is equal to a times r to the power of n minus 1. Well, we know what a is. It's 200 multiplied by r. Now I'm going to put this in brackets just so it's nice and easy to read. And then to the power of n minus 1. Now again, because this question we don't know what n is, that is perfect to leave it like that. That is my answer. Don't, don't make it any more complicated than that. C, find how many orchids are predicted in 10 years' time. Well, in that situation, they're asking me to find T10, which is going to be 200 times 1.18 to the power of 10 minus 1, which is going to give me 9. All right, finding up my calculator, can we work this out? Right now, yep. So we're going to do 200 times 1.18 to the power of nine. Now, knowing how to use your calculator is awesome and quick. Now, we've got a decimal number there. What are we gonna do here? Do we round it up? Do we round it down? Mm, huge confusion over this, to be perfectly honest with you. In this situation here, I would round it up because we've got 887.091 of an orchid. I'm not gonna ignore that 0.091 of an orchid. So if it were me, I would probably be saying 888. Other people may turn around and say, ah, oh, we'll just ignore it, but you can't. I don't think you can because it's still part of an orchid. I, in this situation, would round up and we can argue about that for years. But I think that's the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I will see you again as we progress through this course. If you've not already done so, please do me a favor, TikTok, subscribe on YouTube. It means a huge world to me. Leave a comment if this video was useful and you learned something. If not, I hopefully will see you in another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.